Hey team, Christina here. I want to share with you Pastor Craig's talk on motivating your team. This came from this past All Staff and it was so valuable. I wanted to communicate it to you um, because I really believe this can this will make a difference um, on all of our teams. So he talked about how to motivate your teams. So first of all, what to avoid when motivating. So when we think of motivating, maybe it's um, you want to encourage your team to, let's say, come to huddle on time or to serve consistently, and you want to be able to motivate them towards that outcome. First of all, you want to avoid fear and threats. You don't want to lead from a place of, um, you know, because I told you so, or, uh, you know, because I'm not going to be your friend if you don't do it, or any of those things. You want to build trust at, you know, at every opportunity. The other thing is, um, you don't want um, you don't want to build a uh, you know dangling carrot mentality. You know, um, if you need a carrot to motivate your team, you know, just like a a donkey needs a carrot to keep walking. Um, if you continue to dangle a carrot, hey, if you come on time to huddle, you're going to get a prize or something like that. Um, that may that may be good every now and again, um, but if if um, your folks are acting because of that carrot, you actually may be reinforcing a donkey mentality, you know, that uh, your people are stubborn and lazy when in fact they're probably not. Um, and the truth is, is with what we get to do um, all the time, money and, you know, rewards and stuff, that's not even going to be the thing that ultimately motivates for the long term. Again, that's great for short term, but Long term, it's the why. You know, you're motivated when you are doing what God has prepared you to do. And so often outside rewards may actually cheapen the internal satisfaction for what we get to do. Okay, so that's what you want to avoid when motivating. So here's how uh, you can motivate. There are four different things that you can do, and it's actually um, in the opposite order. So it's in um, last to first. So um, when all else fails, this is number four, when all else, else fails, discipline. Um, one of the, and so what that means is you definitely want to communicate to your team, but if they are not doing a certain thing, you may have to have a tough conversation. You may actually have to implement some disciplinary action, which may look like a tough conversation. It may even eventually look like asking them to step off of the team, um, which of course would never happen unless we had a discussion. Uh, but one of the most demotivating things that we can do as leaders is to allow, um, people to do things wrong on a consistent basis. Um, we call that sanctioned incompetence. You know, if we know that somebody isn't doing uh, a job correctly, we know it's happening and we're not doing anything about it, that's sanctioned incompetence. We're letting that happen. So we, all, we always want to praise publicly. But oftentimes we're told to praise publicly, but discipline privately, you know. So, hey, great job, everybody. But then if we're having a tough conversation, we're going to do that privately. We definitely, for the most part, want to do that. But there are times when we need to discipline publicly to help teach everybody. For example, let's say you have somebody uh, consistently coming late to huddle. Um, let's say... 10 of your people are there on time, but there's one person that always comes late. What impression are those 10 people getting of that one person? You know, one, it may be, I, you know, they, you know, these 10 people may think, oh, they're irresponsible. But if that continues to happen, now they're going to start questioning you as a leader. Hey, are they letting that happen? Have they had conversations? Um, and so in a situation like that, where you may have had a private conversation that with that individual and it still continues to happen, you may now need to step it up a notch and have a public conversation to say, um, you know, hey, listen, there's something that we actually need to discuss as a group um, so that they're clear, your entire team is clear that you are addressing the, the challenge, okay? So generally we want to praise publicly and discipline privately, but there are times that, that you need to publicly discipline. Again, I would say this is not something that you need to do without, uh, like, first, have a, let's have a conversation so we can talk through it first before you actually do it. Um, and then when you're having a tough conversation, which we are, we're going to have on a regular basis as we lead people, we're always going to do it with love. You know, we want to support our people. Um, uh, but sometimes when, when we even say, hey, listen, can we talk a little bit later? 
immediately there's a defensive wall put up by the individual, you know. And so you want to even start that conversation with clearing the air with not statements. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm so excited to get to talk to you. This, this conversation is not me firing you or it's not um, negative. In fact, I want to support you in your role and then have the conversation. Um, you want to show them how their underperformance impacts others. Communicate specifically what needs to change and have them communicate back to you what they heard you say, just so that you make sure that you guys are on the same page. Okay, so that's when all else fails, discipline. All right, that's number four. Number three is empower your team to own the solution. Okay, uh, let's say it's a specific challenge like um, the, your excellence number. So you know that you are going to need, let's say, 16 people at your experience, but you only have 13. Okay, um, how do you motivate your team? will empower them to own the solution. Uh, something that Pastor Craig talks frequently about is this. An average plan executed with full commitment is way better than a great plan executed with partial commitment. Okay, What that means is um, if you can get your entire team rallied around a solution um, and get them excited about it, they're excited about it because they're part of that solution, that's going to that's going to end up way better than you just presenting a solution that they're only moderately excited about. I can tell you that I've done that a hundred times with you guys as my coaching team or even different coaching teams in the past where it didn't even occur to me to get you guys um, to get your input in a potential solution. Rather, I've said, OK, we're going to do this. And then, you know, the whole plan falls flat, you know, and so um empowering the team to own the solution will make a difference towards uh, motivation. So four, when all else fails, discipline. Three, empower them to own the solution. Two, create a culture of appreciation. Create a culture of appreciation. Um, we want to always appreciate people specifically, you know, so not just, hey, great job, but be specific. Hey, when you did this, it, it mattered. When, when I saw you, like I, I shared a post about Jason Barger. Hey, when you spent time with my kid talking about something that he's interested, that made a difference to me as a parent and to my kid in building that relationship. That's specific. Always appreciate more than you think you should and then double it, okay? So you can never appreciate people enough. Brag on your team and, and brag on your team to people close to them. So not just brag to your leader, but Go behind their back and find their spouse and brag to their spouse to say, hey, listen, your wife is an all-star. Thank you so much for, you know, allowing her to serve because she is making an incredible difference. Um, that's going to go a long way because, you know, that spouse is going to find their their wife and say, hey, you're not going to believe what just happened. Um, that's going to be really, really special. Um, be specific. Brag and close. Okay. And don't just find what is wrong. Um Pastor Craig calls it the swoop and poop, okay? Don't just find that one thing is wrong. Uh, find what's right and celebrate it. Now, you don't want to overlook, you know, having the conversation about the bad thing, but find what is right and encourage those positive behaviors. Um, that's really important. Okay, so that's uh, number two, create, 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 create a culture of appreciation. And then the, the first one and the most important one is model motivation, you be the most passionate about your experience. If it's Sunday at 9.30, nobody should be more excited about you than Sunday at 9.30 or Saturday night at 7.30. You are going to be the most passionate. The most powerful leadership tool that you have is your own example. Now, the truth is, is there are times when you may not feel motivated, when I do not feel motivated. So the question is, what do you do during that time? If you're supposed to model it, what do you do when you don't even have it in you to model it? This is what Pastor Craig said, and it was so special. He said, first of all, think about your salvation. What has God done for you? And feel that. Feel that emotion. Think about how blessed we are. How blessed we are. That, frankly, we are all rich. No matter where we are at financially, we are rich. God has blessed us with families, with friends, with cars. I mean, there is so much that he has given us. Think about the difference that we can make in a broken marriage. I've had about three conversations this last week with people that are struggling with broken marriages. Think about the difference that we can make there. Think about what we can do for the next generation and the opportunity we have. Recognize that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Recognize that we are not filling church seats 
We want 250 kids every single weekend, but it's not the number. Recognize that we are not filling church seats, but we are filling heaven. We are filling heaven. I love that. Think about this last weekend or two weekends ago, Life Church as a whole, we saw 862 salvations. 862 people committed their lives to Christ. But think about why it wasn't 863. Every single person matters. And when, when you do that, when you reconnect with, with the why and with what God has done and what he can do through us, suddenly that, that flips the script. And now you're not as discouraged. You're motivated and you want to get after it. And that is what we need to share with our teams. That is motivating. Um, and so I'm excited as God always reconnects us with with the opportunity that we get, with the why, that we are leading kids to become fully devoted followers of Christ. We need to help our teams understand that on a regular basis. And I'm excited as we do that, as we lead strong, as we model motivation, um, God is going to do so much more through us than we could ever imagine. So thank you guys so much. Uh, Make sure you get creative, share with your teams, and trust God first to bring the increase and to do what he is setting out to do. Thank you guys. Talk to you soon.